Welcome to our Bite Size PD session, Enhancing Course Content with HTML, which is just a little look at some of the content offered in our Canvas Black Diamond Professional Development course. This course is for all levels, whether you are an experienced coder or somebody sitting there wondering what exactly HTML is. Don't worry, the only two things you need for this are the ability to copy and paste on your computer and a sense of adventure. In this video, you're going to learn how to use HTML to customize Canvas content pages so that you can create engaging and easy to navigate content in Canvas for both synchronous and asynchronous student learning on Canvas. We are going to visit a Canvas HTML course that I've made public. This houses how-to documentation and HTML snippets that you can copy and paste to customize your own Canvas course. We're gonna view a customized page so you can get an idea of what is possible with HTML. We're going to have a very, very basic intro to HTML and what the HTML editor is in Canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use the resources available in the course. We're going to take some examples step-by-step, step, including background color, adding a horizontal line and adding a pop-up dialog box. And then we'll have a brief overview of some of the other resources available, including intermediate and advanced HTML code snippets that you can experiment with in your own time. For this video, you'll need to go to the Canvas course, canyons.instructure.com slash courses slash 143-5335. We'll go ahead and take a second for you to pull up that Canvas course. You'll know you're in the right place when your screen looks like mine. So now many of us are familiar with a rich content editor, and that is when we go into a Canvas content page and we click edit. This here is the rich content editor, and it's where we can add content to a content page. Most of us are most familiar with the rich text editor within the RCE or rich content editor. And the rich, rich text editor allows us to type just as we would with a word processing software. Uh, and it allows us to choose options and customize our page using this toolbar. So that's the rich text editor. What we're gonna be using today is the HTML editor. And that is this icon down here in the bottom right corner. Notice if I hover over it, it says switch to HTML editor. And when we click on it, things look a little scary if you're new to HTML, but that's okay. Remember, all we're gonna be doing for the most part is copying and pasting HTML, not trying to write it from scratch. So let's take a quick look at what is possible with copy and paste HTML. Here is a sample page with class policies. And using HTML, we can insert something like a table of contents. So notice it helps me more quickly navigate my content page. We can insert buttons that expand to show additional content. And we can even add pop-up dialog boxes. So this creates a much more dynamic experience when it comes to navigating content on a content page for students. It can also help alleviate that text heavy feeling when we have a lot of information to share. So what is HTML? Now I'll be honest with you, I am not a coder and I probably can't do the best job of explaining HTML. What I do know is HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And essentially what it is, is it's what we type in to tell the internet what we want to see displayed. So for example, when we type in HTML, you can see up here, it looks really messy if we're not familiar with it. But we can see certain words that we might recognize like head, title, and then we see H1 and P. These are HTML tags and they represent different elements that we'll see on a website. So for example, here we have H1, and then we've typed my first heading. Notice that is a header that reads my first heading. We have the tag P, which stands for paragraph, and we've typed the text my first paragraph. Down here, we have the text my first paragraph. 
So everything we type into HTML is then interpreted and has a specific look when we're viewing the content page. So again, if you are an experienced coder, you can do a much better job of explaining HTML. But I wanna remind you that all you really need to be able to do here is copy and paste. You don't need to be able to explain what HTML is or even be able to use HTML from scratch. Let's go ahead and go home. And the first thing we're gonna view is background color. Now go ahead and pause this video. And in a new tab, I'd like you to open your own Canvas course. You can use a sandbox course or an unpublished page in a course in which you have students. But go ahead and open a new content page in your own course. And while you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Go ahead and name this page. And now in the Canvas copy and paste HTML course, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to this table here. Now you'll notice lots of different features that we can add using copy and paste HTML, and they have little numbers next to them. The blue ones indicate that they are novice level, the green twos represent intermediate level, and the orange threes represent advanced. I recommend trying all of the novice elements, and once you're ready, and feel comfortable, then move on to intermediate. So let's start with the very first one, background color. You can create colored backgrounds for a portion of your page to draw students' attention to specific text and to help break up a text-heavy page. So you'll notice here that this text up here has a gray background, and I've also used another gray background down below. And it kind of chunks the text that I want participants to view. So what I've provided here is what I'm going to call a code snippet. And this is what you're going to copy and paste. You don't need to understand what this says. You just need to be able to copy it. So down here, we're going to go ahead and copy the code snippet. I'm going to go to the blank page I created. Let's open the HTML editor, paste, and let's return to the rich text editor. So you'll notice I now have a portion of colored background. I can highlight the text placeholder and I can go ahead and type whatever I'd like. It's that simple. Now, if you would like to change the color of the background, we can find that here. Notice it says background color, and then we have the specific color we'd like to use. This is called a hex color code and there is a page on customizing colors within this course to learn more about hex color codes. We can also go to the HTML editor. And if you don't know any hex color codes yet, you can simply type in a common color. Now that's a little hard to read, so I can highlight my text using the rich text editor. I can change my text to white. I could also go back to my HTML editor. Let's say I'd like to use blue. So I can go ahead and play around with that. Again, if I want to get more specific with that background, with that background color, I'll use a hex color code. Otherwise, I can just use a common color like gray, blue, black, red. Please make sure that the text stands out and is easy to read against the background. And you're done. That's all it takes to add a colored background. You will notice though that if I hit enter, I'm still typing within that colored background. Here's a little trick. I can go to the HTML editor. Now this is the start of the code snippet I copied. This is the end of the code snippet I copied. I can now type I can now type outside of the content box. When I return to the rich text editor, now I have text that does not have the colored background. Let's go ahead and try another one. We're gonna to go to horizontal lines. There are lots of options for horizontal lines, and this is a great way to, again, break up content to really help students move through our Canvas pages. 
So again, we have a code snippet here to copy. In my sample content page, let's go ahead and go to the HTML editor. To make things easy, I recommend starting fresh and we're going to paste. Now, if we look back at the course under anatomy of a code snippet, again, you're gonna see which parts of the code can be customized. Here we can change the thickness of that horizontal line. Uh, so of course, the bigger the number, the thicker the line. And then we can also change the color. Once again, we can use commonly used colors such as blue, black, green, etc. So these default colors can also be found under the tab more default colors. And here you can see lots of examples of different thicknesses and different default colors used. Again, if you want more color options, you can go to custom colors. And here you'll see how to use a hex color code to really customize your horizontal lines. We can also change the default solid blue line into a dashed, dotted, or even double line. So notice in our code snippet that we copied and pasted, we have the word solid. We can change that to the word dashed and get a dashed line. Let's go ahead and practice. So when I go to the rich text editor, I can see my solid blue line. Let's go ahead and make it a little thinner. I'm gonna change the four to a two. I'd like it to be dotted and I want it to be green. I can preview that in the rich text editor and I now have a green dotted line. All right, back to our course. Again, the next option in the course is to learn about getting those hex color codes to even further customize the colors that appear on your course. But we're gonna go ahead for the purposes of this video and go to pop-up dialog box. A pop-up dialog box is a button that students can click on and text will pop up for them to read. Now this text can be as long as you want, but be aware that the width of this box is set for 300 pixels. So if the text is longer, students will have to scroll or they'll need to expand the box. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and copy the provided code snippet. Let's go to our sample content page, HTML editor. Again, I'm going to start fresh. Back in our course, a couple things I want to point out. Here in yellow, we can see the text that we want to pop up. So that is what students see here in the box. Let's go ahead and customize that. So here we have text you want to pop up. I'm going to highlight that and replace it with hello. We can also see here in blue that this represents the button text. So in our example, those would be the words click here. So let's go ahead and change click here to what happens if I click this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the rich text editor. And notice this doesn't look like a button. Sometimes in order to preview an HTML element, we actually have to save our content page. Now I can see what happens if I click this and there's my pop-up text, hello. So let's keep editing. I'd like to point out one more thing. Notice that we have dialog for link one and we have it again down here, dialog for link one. If you want two buttons, we can simply copy that uh, code snippet again on a new line. I'm going to paste that code snippet. Now the first button has link one in two places. For my second button, I want it to change it to say link two. Again, I can change my pop-up text and I can change my button text. I can save to preview. Now I have two buttons in my Canvas page. So remember the trick when you have more than one button 
is to change this number in both places. So the first button has link one, link one, second button has link two, link two, etc. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and just take a quick look at the other options we have, but we're not gonna go step by step in how to use them. So again, I said it earlier, but let's just revisit it. If we click on custom colors, you'll find instructions for generating hex color codes to really customize the colors that show up in your Canvas course. And these codes can be inserted directly in the HTML editor, or you'll notice in the rich text editor, when you go to say, change the font color, you can click on the palette and you can enter your hex color code there. So there's a couple ways to get really customized colors. We also have the option to add badges. That's what these numbers are here. You can customize what shows up in the badge and there are four color options. There's blue, green, orange, and red. There is a block quote, which we can see an example right here. You can add a button and it looks like I haven't yet included a sample. However, a button is much the same as a pop-up dialog box. Uh, however, when you click it, it, instead of something popping up, it simply directs you to another Canvas page or another page on the web. Sorry if my navigation's making you a little motion sick. Uh, we have the expand button, which is one of my favorites. When students click the expand button, more text shows up down below. That can be just plain text, or as we saw on our sample class policies page, that expand button can lead to links if we wanna get a little creative. We have the option to add borders, so here you can see it's just that fine gray line and the border can go all the way around a portion of text. It can have rounded edges. It can just be part of the text, excuse me. So for example, uh, left, bottom, and right. There are many options there. Here we have drop caps. Uh, so this reminds me kind of of a book and so if you have a paragraph and want to have that uh, drop cap, then we can do that. Table lists, we're getting on the more advanced side of intermediate here. So here we have a table list. It's just a very aesthetically pleasing way to organize information. We can make it a striped table list so it's easier to read. We can make it highlight on hover. You can also make it striped and highlight on hover. And we can also add colors to a table. Another option is to add buttons in a table. So this looks like we, what we just saw, but here we have buttons. And so you can have a series of buttons linking students to different resources. And then to the right of those buttons, you have a description of what students can find there. Another advanced feature is the floating box. Here we can see a floating box and it sort of, it embeds a box where you can have an announcement, a list of resources, etc. One that I see used quite frequently is tabs. Tabs are a great way to organize lots of information so students can navigate through that information by clicking these tabs. We can also make colored tabs, uh, and ironically enough, the only tab I didn't add a background color to is the colored tabs tab. But you'll notice that these tabs have a gray background. You can make that any color you want using a hex color code. If we wanna get really advanced, we can add a table of contents. Again, we saw, you can see here that the code snippet's a lot longer, and we saw the table of contents on our sample page. That gives us the ability to click and navigate to a specific header on a text heavy page. We can add practice problems. So if you want students to practice a concept, you could always direct them to an ungraded quiz, but let's say you want to teach them a concept, have them quickly practice, teach them a concept, have them quickly practice. One way to do that is to embed a practice problem. 
So here we can see a question, and I hope the answer is correct because I just copied it from the internet. But here we have a question, and then students can choose the answer that they think is right. Notice it says incorrect and provides feedback. Or they choose the correct answer and get more feedback. So a great way to just build in that practice in your explicit instruction. One of the last things we have here is the video carousel, which at this point I have not built the page, but will be shortly. So let's go ahead and go to somebody else's page. Here you can see a series of buttons, video one, two, three. Now without HTML, I could have those videos just listed on the page. I could use a table to put them next to each other. Or to save space, I could use this HTML code snippet. Students can watch the video, click on video two, and notice it appears in the same place. So that is a video carousel. And I will also be creating a page on how to combine HTML. Uh, and this is where things get a little crazy. So we can always use multiple code snippets in a row. So for example, you could have a button followed by a horizontal line, followed by a, a table. And we can also embed HTML elements within other elements. So for example, you could have a tabs page. Let's go ahead and use this as an example. So here I have tabs. But notice I've also used a background color within tabs. So that is HTML within HTML. In no time at all, I will have a page teaching you how to really nest one HTML element within another if you're feeling brave. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, jenna.townsend at canyonsdistrict.org. And I hope you have a lot of fun customizing your Canvas content pages to make them easier and more aesthetically pleasing uh, for students to navigate.